Hi everyone, my name is Matt. I'm new to this whole YouTube thing and in this video I'm gonna be showing you how I won the lottery in a simulation that I built using Python. So sometimes in my moments of weakness I end up buying a lottery ticket and the thing is my numbers never have come up before. I've won maybe one number one time, but that's it. It just got me thinking. So if I actually played the same number every single week for the rest of my life, when, when could I expect my numbers to come up? And instead of doing this in real life, I decided, well, I can just simulate back-to-back -back games in Python and then maybe keep a cool tally of how many games I've played, how much money I've spent, and you know, just see <laughs> what it would actually take to win the lottery. So to build out this project, there are three main components we need to consider. Firstly, we need a way of generating a valid ticket. Secondly, we're going to need a way to actually play the lottery. So we're gonna need some way of picking winning numbers, comparing it to our ticket, and then telling us whether or not we've actually won. And the final thing is the most interesting part, which is keeping a tally of how many games we've played, how much money we've spent, how many weeks it's been, months or years it's been. And I'll be showing you how to build all that out in just a moment. So the interesting thing about building this out is it makes actually playing the lottery a lot more visual because the reality is if you're picking six numbers between one to 59, your chances are one, in 45 million of actually winning the lottery if you buy one ticket. When the numbers get too high, it's very, very difficult to actually visualize how sm small and minute your chances are. So by simulating it in this way using Python, you can actually visually see time ticking on and the days and the games passing and how often you are actually winning. I, I, I think that's a fantastic, insightful use of Python. This is a very bare bones project. It's nothing too crazy. There are certainly better ways of going about making this. So by all means, I invite you to go ahead and make your own, make it more efficient, make it crazier and have better metrics. Please, by all means. Anyways, so I'm gonna get into this now. Okay, so this is my IDE. I'm just using PyCharm with an Atom skin on top of it. And the way this is gonna work is I'll be coding in this area, and then as I print things to the console, for example, hello world, it'll appear in the console here on the right. Okay, I'm gonna just zoom that in a bit as well so we can see it clearer. Okay, so the way I wanna, the way I like to structure these kind of videos is I'm going to tell you what I'm gonna code, speed through the actual coding process, and then I'll talk you through the logic. First things first, what I'm gonna code is a way of generating a unique valid lottery ticket that gives me unique numbers between one to 59. Okay, so just give me one second. Okay, cool. So. This is my function called pick six numbers. It doesn't take any arguments. And basically what it does is at first it creates a list object um, with numbers ranging from one to 59, because remember it's always one minus your upper threshold. That's just how Python is. Uh, then you got your ticket variable here, which is just an empty list. This is where we're gonna be storing the numbers um, that make up our ticket. And then we have this for loop. I don't think X is actually about this it's not very helpful so for num so for numbers in let's say ticket number so ticket number so for ticket number in range six because we're picking six um, tickets sorry we're picking six numbers for our ticket we have pick number which is a random choice of the available numbers so we're using the random library and we're using the choice method within that to pick one random number then we're going to append the pick number to our ticket list and then we are going to remove the pick number from the available numbers list so we don't have any duplicates. After this run six times, we'll have a list of six unique numbers. And then what we're gonna wanna do is sort them in ascending order, which is why we're calling this sorted method. Okay, so now we're gonna test this out. For run, what we have is 7, 11, 16, 27, 37, 42. So it is ascending, which is great, but I don't know whether this is just chance. So. Just to confirm, I'm going to do it from one to seven. And what that should do is it should return to me a list from one to six every single time. So let's check that out. Awesome. So now we can be pretty confident that it works. And I'm going to return this back to 60. Excellent. So now we have a way of generating our tickets. The next thing we're gonna do is actually create the logic that plays a very basic lottery game. So 
Give me one second while I just code this up. So. Okay, and we're back. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do now is uh, talk through the logic here. So first we have our win condition. We have our win condition and game count variables. Win condition is false, variables is zero. And then we have the logic here. So while the win condition is false, increment the game count by one every time you run this loop and then give me a new set of winning numbers. So we have our winning numbers, which calls the pick six numbers function. This is very good because we're recycling functions. And then if my if the winning numbers are equal to my ticket, print you've won and then set the win condition to true, which will break the loop and end the game. So just so, uh, just so we don't have to wait too long, I'm gonna set the available numbers from one to nine and we are going to run that and check it out, we've won. This is great, but we don't actually know how many games we've played. And I wanna, I wanna integrate this in quite a slick way. So I'm gonna actually change up this print statement. So instead it's going to say, you've won, and it only took games. Format and then games count. So basically what this format function does is it looks for the string, it looks for these curly bracket pairs, and then inside of it, it replaces it with the game count variable. So now if we run this, we can see you've won and it only took 111 games, which is quite unfortunate. Um, but at least it works, which is super. And if we increase this to 20, let's see what happens. <laughs> so you've won again, Ben, uh, but this time it took you 68,000 runs. These numbers are going to get pretty big, especially since uh, that was just a 10, 10 digit increment. Now we're going to increase it to 60, okay? Um, a cool trick with these format string uh, method is what you can do is if you add colon, comma, this will format the string so that every three digits it will add this comma. So it's a lot more readable. And this is going to be great because um, we're going to get some pretty, pretty big numbers. So let's go back to our original and see how long it takes to, uh, yeah, let's see. So I'm not actually gonna wait for this because it seems like it's gotten stuck in some kind of loop, but the reality is um, it's extremely unlikely that our numbers are gonna come up. So it's actually taking forever, but it'd be, Nice if you could visualize actually how many games are being played. So what we can do is print game count. So every time it loops, at the end, if we didn't win, it's just gonna print the game count. So let's see what happens. Yeah, so you can see we've already played 200,000 games. Um, I think, it's, it's so fast I can't tell. But you can see it's, it's, <laughs> we're playing lots and lots of games at the same time. And I'm going to end this. This is great. It's very helpful, but it's uh, quite ugly. It's not very aesthetic and it's it, it just looks a bit, it doesn't look very good. I have a trick that I want to show you, which I use all the time and it's fantastic for operations like this. So first I'm going to zoom in and uh, give me one second while I write up an example. Okay, so I've written up this quick example. What you can see is that we've imported time. So we have a for loop that goes, to, uh, that loops 10 times. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna print the X value. So if I run this, you can see it's printing and then it waits one second, then it prints again. And this is exactly what we're having right now with the games, except this is a lot slower. What I wanna do is I'd like it all to be on the same line instead of creating a new line every time. So a trick you can use is So basically what this is, this is a return statement. Um, and this would delete whatever is before it. And this is an end argument. And basically what it's saying is at the end of this print statement, instead of creating a new line, just tack it on to the end, okay? So what happens is it's gonna tack on the next print statement onto itself and then remove the previous print statement or remove the previous string. And if we play this now, you can see that it increments over the same line, which is 
which is super. It's a lot cleaner, it looks a lot nicer, and it's fantastic for what we're about to do. So if I go to our previous one again, and then implement this, we can see that now it's incrementing in a, in a nicer, more clean way. And actually we can make this even better. What we can do is, just like before, we can, uh, we can utilize our format function for strings. So I'm gonna do that. And then in format, we're gonna say game, and then add our comma, add our clever comma thing. And now we can see uh, what game we're playing. Uh, rather what game we're on a lot more clear. But you can see that actually is starting to flicker in and out because it's, it's playing through so many games so quickly. Um, it's glitching slightly. And what we can do to make that even cleaner is we can say if game count, when you divide it by, let's say 250, if there are no remainders, then print the game count. And what that will do is it will only print every increment of 250 games, okay? And we can change that to whatever we want. So we can change that to 1,000 if we wanted. It will do it a lot less often, or we could change it to 10,000. And uh, yeah, you get the gist. So it's a lot cleaner, it's a lot nicer. And effectively now, we actually have the, we have our fundamental lottery game. It can keep count of how many games we're playing, and it can actually tell us when our numbers have come up, which is fantastic. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually develop this a bit more. I'm going to add some bells and whistles to it, and I'll come back in just a moment to explain what I've done. Okay, so give me one sec. Okay, and we're back. And um, so what basically what I've done is I've added some additional calculations. So when we do actually get our winning numbers, what we're going to do is we're going to perform some calculations to determine the cost weeks and years. So we have a variable here called total cost. And what it is, it's, it's game count times two because every ticket costs two pounds. So we're doing that. We have total weeks. Uh, and if we assume we're playing twice a week, which you can do in the UK, um, then we have two games per week. So it's just game count divided by two if we're playing twice a week. And then finally, total years. And what that is, is it's the total number of weeks divided by 52, because there's 52 weeks in a year. And then we're going to round that to one decimal place, otherwise the number gets a bit long. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to print out the, um, <laughs> the final results of that. And that's gonna be really interesting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this run. I've changed the number back to 60. This is just me performing some tests. I've changed the number back to 60. Uh, I might as well just go get some coffee. I'm gonna let this run and I'll be back in just a minute. not broken. <laughs> Okay, so we finally won. <laughs> that, that may have been um, my most unlucky run yet, um, which is pretty representative of real life. But 
Jesus. So, okay, so we have 125,640,000 runs. In total, that cost us 251 million pounds, 62 million weeks, and I would have been playing for 1,208,000 years. So I guess I shouldn't be planning my holiday anytime soon, but yeah, so, so this is exactly what we were trying to get, and uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic illustration of just how long, how unlikely it is to actually win the lottery if you buy one ticket. So that's how I built out this little simulation thing in Python. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope it made sense. Like I said, I am new to this whole YouTuber thing, so if you have any comments or suggestions on how I can make the video better or clearer, please by all means share them in the comments. This has been a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to making more videos, so if you like what you see and you want to see more, please do stick around and subscribe. <laughs> Thanks for checking out the video guys. See you later. Hi everyone, my name is Matt. I'm new to this. <laughs>